the tools I'm going to need for this job. I've got a brush to uh, sweep the floor in little places I've already swept it. Um, two size nail bars, not two sizes not totally necessary, just have them. A razor knife, a hammer, sharpie or something to mark with, some fresh blades, uh, the razor knife blades, a square, and a measuring tape. So that's what you're going to need plus the click lock flooring. I'm going to show you how to remove the baseboard. We're going to do some flooring, but I'm going to show you how to remove the baseboard. And uh, I've got a nail bar. I've got two different nail bars, a small one and a large one. And uh, I'm going to use this small one to like start to, to get it started. Take it with a hammer. But one of the things that you do, if you just go ahead and leave it this, you might knock a hole in your sheetrock. So I'm going to use this larger, and you can use a little piece of wood, but I'm going to use this larger nail bar to just to prop behind it to protect the sheetrock and my baseboard is still in place before I put my new baseboard on I want to do a little pencil mark where my studs are where these original nails were you can see right here the original nails so I'm going to make a little pencil mark and if I need to come back and touch it up with the paint I'll do that or I can erase it And I'm also going to save my uh, pieces of baseboard so that I'll use those. That was over in the corner behind. Uh, I'll use these to measure my, uh, my new pieces of baseboard. This is the flooring I'm going to be using. Uh, the floor was ply is plywood and uh, I painted it like 10 years ago. Just faux painting to make it look like tile, fixing to cover it up. There's a couple of things I want to show you about. This is uh, click lock vinyl, and uh, so it does not have to have the plastic, the underlayment on the floor. It's vinyl through, and uh, it's really easy. There's a short side where the little uh, snap in place pieces are short and there's a long side and the long clicks into the short and what you want to do is get a really good line these edges here and here up and that will ensure a nice tight fit and you can see here let me zoom in just a little bit so you can let me make sure I'm zooming in let's zoom in and you can see that that is a really tight fit right there and so once you have that, back up a little bit, then it's really easy then to slide this short edge that's here and offset. There's a join right here and there's a join right here. So you don't want to put these two spots together. And that's the reason that you'll offset your tile just a little bit. <clears throat> Maybe cut one short as you're beginning your row and then the next one not the same because this is going to make a weak spot. So I'm going to shift this and you can kind of see right here's my join now and here's this one. This is not going to stay in place. I'm just giving you a sample. I'm going to lift this up a little bit and that's it. And so there's a nice tight fit right there. Really tight fit. So that makes a good seal. I've done my uh, closet floor. Uh, it's too tight, too close in there for me to get the camera and my body in there for you to see. So here's where I'm at under the closet door and then uh, I'll go over. I'll start in that corner. So, so that's I have the out. inside of the closet is done and so now I need to do, and I've done this piece, uh, the first one coming into the bedroom, and I need to do this piece uh, and a little trick that my darling hubby showed me whenever he used to lay tile is instead of trying to measure and get all those little angles right that right in there, uh, what I'm going to do is take this tile, this plank, and I'm going to line it up exactly with the previous plank. Then I'm going to take another one that's a full length, and I'm going to put it up against the door facing. And that is where my cut mark is going to be for that facing. Now I am going to measure. 
there, and I've got one and a half, so I'm going to measure to one and a half right here. Is that close enough for them to see? See it. And my door facing is, let me put that down so I don't mark my, is three Aww. inches. And I'm going to leave the rest of it so it'll go underneath the, the door. This is where I cut out to uh, score that, to put it uh, by the door facing. And I'm going to measure it one more time, uh, just to make sure. Okay, so what I did is I used my razor knife, and I scored uh, the cut marks. And I'm glad that I measured it twice, because I had this too long. And I'll use some goof off to get that off. And then I used uh, a pair of wire snips, just to pinch this out and break it. Uh, and it breaks really easy, easily once you get the, the line scored with the razor knife. And I did about probably about four or five passes with a really nice sharp new blade. And then pinched in, cut in with the wire cutters. So now I'm going to see if this is going to fit the way that I hope it will. Okay, so I've got this ready. I've got this cut out. And I'm fixing to go into this corner. And I hope I hope it fits because I didn't do a trial run. I've got my big brush. This is just a old paintbrush. And I'm going to make sure that I don't have any little pieces of trash or dirt. There, there was one big hunk right there. And let's see, and I may not be, this is probably not the thing to show you. Ah! Oh, it's not. It's not going to fit. Okay, so I have uh, swept out my, I've got me a brush, swept out my little corner here, get all the trash out of the way. If there's any there, uh, I've done me a, I've done my cut. Uh, I know that it's going to fit. I've did a little test run here. I maneuver this into this groove right here and get that underneath. Now is the tricky part because with this click lock, I need to get this joined really good, and then I'm going to lift this up a little bit and click it into this section right here, and just kind of move this back and forth until I get it to snap in place. tight right there so it's putting pressure here so I'm going to come back off trim this out a little bit back here back in this corner so this will lay flush I'll be back okay, in a I second. could just uh, like do this just the one time and make you think that I know exactly what I'm doing and then you wouldn't know how to deal with mistakes but I'm not going to do that because I want you to know how to deal with your mistakes so I've trimmed this off back in here so I have just a little bit more room to get that to snap in place I've got a good clean snap right there. Bring this back just a little bit into that area. Do it one more time. So I want a good fit there. And a good fit in here. thing. Uh, I could, in fact, I think I will. I'll just mark this, uh, get this in place, but just temporarily. And I have my, I don't know if it's called a square. I know it's not a triangle. Maybe it's a square. Go right to the edge. I'm going to mark it with my sharpie, and then I'm going to come back with. I didn't show you this a while ago on just cutting this, just plain. Oh, not any kind of grooves or anything like that. Just 
want to make sure that I don't cut myself. And this floor I'm covering up, so I'm not worried about cutting into that. Make sure I don't cut my thumb. I'd rather make several passes, easy passes. Can't find my triangle. I'm going to do about four passes. And that scores into the surface of the tile. I don't know, I didn't count. Did you count? And then just snap it. Easy peasy. Move that out of the way. Get my little brush. Make sure I don't have trash underneath there. It's going to make a dent in the tile later. Snap that in place. Lift it a little bit. Click that in. Make sure I didn't get it out any of, uh, over here. It's into the doorway. There we go. I want to show you. I want to show you how easy it is to cut this up. Now I'm up against the wall here, and this is a, an entire plank. But I don't want to do an entire plank here. Uh, and let me see. There is my last place. So you can see it was shorter. But so I think I'm going to go about here, over in here. There's about a three inch spot that's over there. So I'm just going to come, and I'm just kind of looking about five or six back. And uh, I want, if that's the length that I want, I'm going to turn this, or I could measure it. This is my short end. So I'm going to say that this is about where I want that. So I'm going to turn this back. Because I need this short end on the left side, depending on that's the direction that I'm going. And let's see, and it has arrows on the back, but that's the direct there's arrows on the back, that's the direction to go. So I'm gonna mark this with a little sharpie. And since this is not just a real exact precise, I'll show that in other sections of the video on how to do that. I've got a little metal square. And I've got a good sharp blade. I'm going to raise your knife, make sure everything's out of the way. And I'm going to do about four passes. And it scores the surface of the tile. And then all you have to do is just snap and snap. And this is my side that I'm going to use. So that will go there. This end that I've cut off. It's going to go against the wall on the other side. Here's my pieces that I have to go in next. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to line up my edges really well. And there's a gap. So lift and just kind of just be patient with it. There I've got. And so that's the long side going against that short side. It's ready to lift and snap in place and just be patient and there it is I forgot to tell you that you're going to want a pair of knee pads to really save your knees now I'm going to do this long strip uh, a little bit different than what I've done on the other ones just to kind of show you a different technique I'm going to do the snap lock make sure they're good and even Kind of push them up close. And same thing here, make sure my corners are nice and even, my edges. Snap it into place. Now I'm going to have to trim this one down here. So I'll tip this so that you can see. I hope you can see that. So I'm going to turn this the opposite way because I've just got a little bit to cut off. I'm going to leave me a gap against the wall. I've got my little sharpie. Make me a little mark here. Lift this up just a tiny bit. Make another little mark. And use my square, my L. And I only have 
just a tiny little bit of space. Actually, let me do this. I don't want to confuse you, but this is the part that's actually going to go against the wall. I'll have a little bit more support for my ruler this way. Make sure all my thumbs and fingers are out of the way. And this is going to be a little bit harder because it's such a small space to uh, break this. So I'm going to use my uh, just my little wire snips and just bend that. I don't know if you can hear it crackle to the snap it. There we go. Snap it back off. Easy peasy. Put that out of the way so I don't cut my toes. Line up my corners, my edges. That's good, and that's a good fit. So now I'm going to snap it in place. You see if you can see where I'm at. And there's my constant companion, Miss Kitty No. I'm making sure that I do it right. So now I have this all in a long row. And I've closed up pretty much my gap, so I don't have to so far to manipulate it. I'm going to lift, lay this in. That came undone, so let me do that again. Lining up the corners. So one of the things that I didn't say is I have a very massive room to do. This room is 14 wide by 24 long and so it's no small task and I'm going to move, I'm not going to clear the room because I've got large pieces of furniture so I'm moving everything down to one end and then I'll move it back as I get